Hello, I am Charlie Wall from Luxembourg. I am a former young scientist and uh, I stu I'm studying currently biochemistry at the University of East Anglia. And uh, I'm really looking forward to start a PhD next year, uh, which uh, takes me to both poles of uh, our planet. Hi, Charlie. Excellent. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Now, when you say you're a former young scientist, you're referring to the FJSL, which is the Foundation for Young Scientists of Luxembourg, right? Because you, exactly. are, you are still a young scientist, <laughs> but... <laughs> Always at heart. <laughs> exactly, right. Can you tell me more about the FJSL? What, what does this organization do and how did you participate? FJSL organizes an annual contest uh, for which um, high school students need to submit um, uh, a little project they, where they uh, address a scientific question they, they had on their mind. And then the FJSL um, gives them the opportunity to present that in front of an independent jury. So what was your project about for this contest? Um, I was analyzing uh, the effect of, of uh, biotic and abiotic stresses on the sulfur metabolism of plants. After the contest, I was sent to the European Union contest for young scientists. So that's the Europe-wide contest for, uh, of, of the same version. And I also participated in London International Youth Science Forum and I was like a summer student at um, Imperial College for two weeks. Um, and thirdly, the, the jury sent me to uh, INASPO, which is uh, a competition in, uh, in the Netherlands. And uh, we won a second prize there for best scientific thinking in okay. 2012. Excellent, neat. And that's interesting, the name of the award that you won it was for scientific thinking, right? Because as I understand it, it doesn't actually matter so much what results you come to because this experience is for young people to learn about research. So we learned how to work in the lab, um, learned how to present a paper, write, present a poster, and I think those are the skills that you learn during participation at such a contest. That's awesome because all of this, all this research experience you've done before starting your bachelor's even, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, awesome. The work that I've done there really inspired me to study biochemistry at the University of East Anglia. So I, w I wanted to really pursue that. I continued developing my outdoor skills. Uh, I started climbing when I was at university. And um, after my course, I was at a point where I felt like I had to decide uh, what, which one I would want to go for. And uh, I wanted to, to do both. And then I found this PhD project and I thought that would be the brilliant idea to combine my passion for the outdoors and for the science. That's wonderful to know that that's possible, right? You're, when you become a scientist, you're not committing yourself to living in the lab, right? You're going to be able to go on actually an incredible outdoor adventure during your yeah. PhD, right? Um, yeah, as part of my PhD, I will um, measure uh, flux of uh, certain gases between um, the atmosphere and the sea. These measurements are really important because those uh, compounds catalytically break down ozone and uh, previously it hasn't been possible to measure the exchange and uh, therefore we couldn't measure uh, how relevant their catalytic activity is in the creation of the ozone hole wow, and okay. uh, I, hope, I hope that with my measurements we can find out uh, how much how, how important they are. Yeah, amazing, okay. So this is new because there are new techniques or new equipment that it's able to do this? Yeah, I'm joining the group of Professor Phil Nightingale, and uh, they upgraded their machine and added a new add-on to the machine, and uh, which allows to do those, which allows to do live measurements and also uh, to distinguish uh, better between different gases. I'll be taking the the, the machine onto a boat and yeah. going to the south pole and the north pole. And uh, so, how do you get to the poles? To go to the south pole, and I'll fly to. Ascension Island, which is a small tropical island in the middle of the um, Atlantic. And I'll be waiting there for a good weather window to fly to the Falklands. And uh, in the Falklands, I will take a, a boat, the James Clark Ross research vessel, cool. uh, and drive from um, the Falklands to Rotera Island. And then um, on the boat, my science will happen and I will take my measurements because it's all about the, the interface between the sea and the atmosphere. Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll probably be working like as much as I can day and night on, on, on that machine to collect as many um, measurements as possible and also in a regular interval. And, um, and if I'm not uh, sitting at the machine, 
the boat also has a, a gym and a lounge and um, and everybody has and sweet accommodation so that that's really good <laughs> that's better than at home <laughs> have you had any advice from people who have already sailed to the poles to help you prepare um um, they, I think the, the only regret that they had was that they didn't buy a, a nicer camera when they, when they went there five years ago or so. And, um, and so I, I'm looking forward to take really nice pictures of uh, penguins and the ice and also polar bears because I'm going to North Pole as well. <laughs> How cool is that? How many people get to say that? For my job, I've got to go to the South Pole. Ah, oh, and then i got to go to the North Pole. <laughs> Very lucky, but you've worked really hard for it, so that's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And thank you for sharing your story today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.